Dzień dobry Państwu. Ja nazywam się Adam Kozela. Jestem pracownikiem Instytutu Fizyki Jądrowej. Jesteśmy teraz w laboratorium eksperymentu Brown. Eksperymentu, który zajmuje się pomiarem pewnej interesującej własności oddziaływań słabych. Robimy to poprzez pomiar współczynników korelacji w rozpadzie swobodnego neutronu. To jest bardzo trudny pomiar, o czym może świadczyć fakt, że w zasadzie jeszcze nigdy nie były zmierzone. Eksperyment Brandt jest eksperymentem, można powiedzieć, czysto polskim, choć teraz włączają się do niego inne instytucje zagraniczne. Dzięki ambitnym celom tego eksperymentu jest to eksperyment budzący spore zainteresowanie na Zachodzie. Celem naszej grupy, naszym zadaniem, jako Instytutu Fizyki Jądrowej jest budowa detektora śladowego śledzącego elektrony z rozpadu neutronów. O tym detektorze opowie Państwu nasza doktorantka z Indii, Pani Karishma Darmeyer. The detector, which I will describe now, has to be operated under the clean conditions. So now we will move to our clean room. In experimental nuclear and particle physics, gas filled detectors are used to detect energetic ionizing particles like electrons, protons, and so on. In this lab, we also work on a gaseous detector called multiwire drift chamber. This is our multiwire drift chamber on which we work. So, with this special kind of a chamber, we study electrons emitted in beta decay of free neutron. So we study them by analyzing their trajectory in the chamber by doing three-dimensional reconstruction and also measure or study the energy deposited by them in the scintillator. To understand the working principle of multi-wire drift chamber, I will use the present geometry of our detector. From the name itself, you might have already guessed that multi-wire drift chamber consists of multiple wires. These wires are mainly two types, a negatively charged cathode wires and positively charged anode wires. These wires are perpendicular to the plane of screen. If you draw an imaginary line to connect the cathode wires, you can realize that this configuration forms hexagonal cell-like structure. Now let's keep this system in a special kind of a gas mixture. When an energetic ionizing particle like electron passes through such a system, it will ionize the gas molecules, creating pairs of electrons and ions on its path. Due to presence of electric field, ions will move towards cathode wires and electrons will drift towards anode wire, which further will be used as a signal. The time taken by free electrons to reach anode wire is called drift time. From drift time, the drift distance, that is the distance from primary ionization to the anode wire can be calculated. The circle around the anode wire has a radius equal to the drift distance. Now let's replace the single cell with the collection of identical cells which has electrodes and placed in a gas mixture. In the realistic picture, we also need to add scintillator, which not only provides information about amount of energy deposited by particle, but also provides trigger, which is used to calculate drift time. When energetic electron passes through such a system, multiple cells which are in the path of electron will produce signals. From this signal, drift distance will be calculated. With this information, 
circles can be drawn around the heat cells. And the line which passes closest to these circles will be the trajectory of electron in XY plane. Usually the chamber is closed, but in order to get the better view, we have opened it. As you can see, inside it is consist of many thin wires. So we have your anode wires and cathode wires. This chamber uh, during operation is filled with a special kind of a gas mixture, which is based on helium. On the top of this, we have our scintillator placed. So here you can see the scintillator. This scintillator provides the information about the trigger for drift time and also provides information about the energy deposited by the electrons in them. So this is our scintillator and on the top of it uh, we have photomultiplier tubes. This is the XY plane of the geometry where they form hexagonal shaped structure. The signal which is induced in anode wires are amplified in this pre-amplifier ports and then sent further for processing and recording. The, along the wire, this is our z-axis, so in order to get the third component in tracking, we use a special kind of a method known as charge division technique. In order to get the information about heat position in z-axis that is along the length of wire we use a method called charge division technique on the screen you can see anode wires which are positively charged when energetic particle like electron passes through such a system near the heat position charge will get collected this charge Will, get, will then get splitted equally into the both direction of the wire. These wires are basically metallic and thus possess resistance, which is directly proportional to the length of wire. And because of that, the amount of charge that will be received at end of the wire will be different. Here, QL is the charge collected from the left side of the wire and QR is the amount of charge collected from the right side of the wire. Then for each wire, asymmetry can be calculated with a simple formula. And then heat position for that wire, that is the information of heat position on Z axis is directly proportional to the asymmetry calculated. Our detector provides precise tracking of electrons from beta decay and it is doing it at very high efficiency. Poza budową tego detektora, w ramach eksperymentu Brand zajmujemy się jeszcze wieloma innymi rzeczami. Budujemy specjalną komorę próżniową wyposażoną w bardzo cienkie okienka. Zajmujemy się systemem akwizycji danych. Oczywiście będziemy uczestniczyć w analizie danych z tego eksperymentu. Eksperyment zostanie przeprowadzony we Francji w Instytucie Laue Lange Vem w Grenoblu na wiązce, specjalnej wiązce zimnych neutronów.